we are with the McDole MTSS co-teaching team uh, to really talk about the highlights of being that effective co-teaching model for our staff and community. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Um, I'm Stacy Salzman. I'm MTSS at McDole for fourth and fifth grade. And I'm Kelly Prisco, and I'm the general education teacher for fourth and fifth grade ELA. Excellent. Thank you so much for doing this. I know it can be stressful, so thank you ahead of time. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how have the two of you really built a team and found that cohesiveness among uh, teaming and co-teaching? I'll say, go ahead. <laughs> I, um, I think it helped a little bit because we worked together um, previously at KST. Um, so we have actually taught together. I taught ELA, Kelly taught STEM, and we were kind of partners there. So um, we had that background a little bit too, which was super nice. So then when Kelly came over here, um, I know I was able to help a little bit with the ELA portion of yeah. it, but we um, had already known each other. So Perfect. having that relationship helps. Yeah. Yes. And just at the beginning of the school year, we kind of sat down and had a conversation about classroom expectations and routines. So that way we were both on the same page of what we expect students, what we expect of each other. And that way there was no kind of room for any confusion along the school year. That's perfect. I, I like that opportunity ahead of time before it gets crazy yeah. with students and, and curriculum to really make sure that you're on the same page and to take some time to find differences and come to that happy agreement that you all yeah. can stay with. That's we expect excellent. students to not know at the beginning of the yep. school year, so <laughs> making sure that we also are on the same page. Yeah. You know, every school year is different too, and so I'm sure um, next year, hopefully we'll be teaching together again and that we'll be able to have that same conversation because even though it's another year, we might have been changing some things based off what we learned this year. For sure, that constant reflection of yes, practice is, exactly. is definitely needed. I think too, it is so important for the students to be able to hear that common message no matter which teacher they really engage yes. with. So that's important to establish kind of those joint beliefs and shared beliefs and, and joint messages. Well, it's nice because I do feel like the kids in here view me as another teacher. Yeah. You know, it's they, sure. they don't view me as someone coming in. It's like. They, you know, yeah, they, it's exactly they view me it's as the a bonus teacher. teacher that's yep. in the room. They're lucky they have those two awesome. qualified yep. teachers who are sharing that same philosophy, which oh. is which is awesome. I love that, and you know, I was able to be in here for a lot of the community building and expectation setting, and I'm yes. really feeling part yep. of that classroom. With yes, the kids. yeah. But, so, how do you have what communication strategies do you have between the two of you as a team to to make sure that what you have as agreements yeah. ahead of time remains throughout the year. There is a lot, and it <laughs> takes a lot of flexibility of what works and what doesn't, yes. especially because we both do also have you know personal lives mm -hmm. um, and different things at night. So sometimes it's emails, sometimes it's text messages, sometimes it depends on the content. So if it's a quick thing, it can be a quick text message back and forth um, of when that happened, like when you respond to it, that's totally fine. If it's something that we might need more than just the two of us, we might go to email threads. Um, we do have like a common planning. Um, doc like a Google Doc oh, so nice. that way she's able to see what I'm thinking or I can plop ideas on there she shares resources that way too so there's a lot of different some phone calls and lunches. different things yeah lots of lunches <laughs> plan over lunch yes. a lot yeah. because a lot of times too it's hard to sit down and find yeah. just that common plan time because Stacy is co-teaching with a lot of other teachers as well and so I don't want to take all of her plan time because she has other subjects to prepare for so sometimes it's a quick conversation during lunch of, hey, I had this idea, and then we can mull it over together and then find out if we want to implement it or not. Wow. So, Or last of, night at nine o'clock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I yes. have this great idea, can yeah. we try this tomorrow? Yeah. So, but then, yes. you know, the being, yeah, yes. being open to that too, and knowing that you have that trust to say, yes, I like that idea, or well, what, can you explain it a little bit more? So there's, it yes. takes a lot of figuring out for the conversations too. And also we're super flexible. Like, yes. so we will try something like in the classroom and like I feel like just by eye contact sometimes yeah like this is not working no. the way we want so yeah, yeah. like I'm going to take this small group over here you keep teaching over here uh -huh. so yes yeah. yeah. so yeah and I think that does come with time too like Stacy yeah. mentioned we have been teaching previously and so we've had that relationship of I know what Stacy's expectations are for students so if I see a lesson not going that way mm -hmm. you know I can kind of prepare myself for okay we're going to have this conversation later is this going to be a sit down conversation where we can take notes and reflect or is this going to be a quick email or quick text message of very small simple fix. Yeah. So. It's interesting um, in another interview where I was meeting with a co-teaching the one thing they mentioned was the eye contact during the lesson like uh -uh, this is <laughs> yes. <going."> yes. <laughs> so that seems to be the common trend 
Uh, I know. We can look at each other and know we got to change the it's model a really of cool it. It's a really cool feeling, though, too, <laughs> yes. because then you don't feel like you're the only yeah. one seeing it flop, and you don't feel like a failure yes. as a teacher of, like, it's all on me. Yeah. It's like, no, but then you automatically have two brains that are powering through how are we going to bounce back? Yeah. How are we going to follow up this lesson? And we and we did pretty good because like a lesson that we're doing today actually was one yes. we taught previously and um, we we team taught it. Um, so we were both up there. We were team teaching it, and afterwards we reflected and thought we didn't really they didn't really get what we wanted uh-huh. out of this. So today we're going to parallel teach it. I mean, okay. so okay. yeah. So we're just going to try a different and sometimes model. Sometimes it's Perfect. as simple as like switching up the structures. Yep. Oh, so for sure. the content can be completely there. But when you have different class sizes of either bigger class sizes or the smaller ones, the different structures definitely depend on the students themselves. And so, yeah. So you started to discuss the next question of, um, we know we have six co-teaching models, and it sounds like you do a lot of reflection on what model makes the most sense for this at this time. And when it doesn't, what do we go to next? How do you, what do you, what factors do you look at to decide that model initially? It really depends on the content sometimes. I mean, we've already talked, started teaching about like next year, we're going to try this with, you know, this particular lesson Mm -hmm. or. um, And I think what we want out of the students too, like if we want a product out of the students, we want to give them a little bit more of our attention. So then we might do the parallel teaching or the one big, one small, if there are student needs that we know they might need a little bit more from a teacher, but then we have a group who like to be a little bit more independent. Um, We can go that structure with it. Um, Yep, and we've already already started doing that with some of our lessons. Like we have started with using one model um, for Mm -hmm. like POP. Oh, yeah. And now um, for Poppy, yeah, we've started one model, and now we've already transitioned to a different mm-hmm. model that we feel like works better. So yeah, we you know we're kind of just fle- definitely flexibility yeah. with the different models. And yeah, and like we said, taking those student needs into considerations mm-hmm. as simple too as some students who really just need some love from a teacher that day right. and need a little bit more attention and need a little bit more reinforcement. In. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. having that flexibility as well. There's yeah. a lot of flexibility that kind of goes into it. Is but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but as long as we're on the same page and know that we're having the students first and it's yeah. student centered, then it And makes with it co-teaching easier. you really have to have that com- comfort level, I feel yes. like because Agreed. when you are flexible, you have to be comfortable with the other person just saying, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to take know this, this over plan, here. Yep. but I'm going to switch it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> going down yes. a tangent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and knowing that they have a reasoning for it, and you might know not know in that exact moment, but then we can yeah. follow up later. Love it. So you have shared tons of different tips. I would say flexibility is the, the number one that we have definitely heard in your conversation. What other tips would you share for teams that are just kind of starting co-teaching or in the co-teaching method and thinking, how can I really enhance and make this a little bit better? Um, I would say definitely just being open-minded okay. um, and being able to view things from other people's perspective because okay. sometimes you have, I mean, sometimes you, I, you can go in with one idea, mm-hmm. but then you have to look at, you mm-hmm. know, um, and be open to everybody else's yeah. idea too. Yeah. And especially with MTSS, I mean, we're working with so many different teaching styles. Absolutely. And yes, yep. seeing what everybody's comfortable with and then starting with that, but then kind of expanding as you go. Even planning styles. Yes. You know, yeah. some that want to plan ahead or some that on the spot. spot can plan. Yes. And so you do have to have that flexible and open mindedness to the process. Yes, I like absolutely. That. I think getting to know your co teacher yeah, as yes. a person, yes. too, and understanding that they will also have feelings and emotions, and there might be some hard conversations, and there might be times they're like, can we try this? And you're like, I don't want to. But being able to justify it or have reasons and having the comfort and professionalism between the two of you to have those tough conversations. And the act of listening, I think, goes yes. into a part of that of, I hear you saying you don't want to to me, but I, I need to not shut down. I need to continue to actively yes. listen and see, well, why is it that she has that perspective? And then finding some, maybe some compromise you or, yeah, yes. absolutely. I love that. Well, thank it, you guys very much. Yes. <laughs> uh, I cannot uh, s- thank you enough for this, and I know that the two of you have really built something special here with that co-teaching model, and and I appreciate you sharing a little bit of your story with everybody else. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.